Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Tony Avina, and I want to help you learn how to design t-shirts. Today we'll be using Adobe Illustrator. So once you have Illustrator open, we need to create a new file. And we're going to make this file 12 inches wide by 12 inches high. And our color mode will be RGB. Okay, I already have mine open. So first thing I want to do is grab my rectangle tool. It's M is your shortcut on your keyboard. And I'm just going to draw a, re a square from the top corner of my artboard to the bottom corner of my artboard. And mine is already set to black. If you need to change yours, go to swatches. Make sure this stroke swatch is in the front. Then click none. Then select your fill swatch and select black or you can go here and do the same thing and get a nice rich black with that selected I'm gonna to go to object lock selection and now this black is locked to my artboard and I can't select it I can't move it and that'll help when I'm designing the rest of my design if I need to unlock it I can just go here to unlock all Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make this type around the path on the top and the bottom of the circle. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool, find the center of my artboard, hold down Option, Alt if you're in Windows, and Shift. And I'm going to make an 8-inch circle here. 8-ish, eight, doesn't matter if it's perfect. And now I have a black fill and no stroke, so I want to go back here to my colors, select the fill, hit none, select the stroke, and click on this white. So now I, now I have a white circle here. And I want to get type on the top just like this and type on the bottom. So what I need to do is grab my scissors tool, click this left anchor, and click this right anchor. Now there's a lot of different ways to make your type around a circle like this. Uh, we're gonna be using the baseline shift method today. And we'll, that's probably the easiest one and the quickest to jump into. So I'm gonna grab my type tool, mouse over this top part until I find the anchor point. And it, it, it'll change the word from path to anchor. Click there, go back to my color picker make sure fill is in front and click white and now my text is upside down which is fine I'm just gonna start typing I'll type if you okay so with this selected I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool click this right there's a line here going up and down there's one two three lines in my guide and when I mouse over this my cursor is going to change you'll see it turns black and then there's a line a vertical line with a right pointing arrow once I get that I can click and drag this over here now this sets the boundaries for my type so now I can type all the way around from end to end my direct selection tool I can click the center one center line here and then just drag it up we need to start fresh here so I'm just gonna set my baseline shift to zero so now I can finish typing out so you'll set these all to default so now I can finish typing out if you don't like taco or if you don't like click off my artboard here grab my Type tool, find this center anchor point, and type in I'm. Okay, before I start typing, again, I need to make sure that my type is set to white. So fill swatch, then fill it with white. Type out I'm nacho type. And now this one is right side up but I'm still off to one side here, even though I have my paragraph set to a line center. 
So I'm just going to click my direct selection tool, mouse over this line on the left here, wait till the icon changes, click and drag. Now you might have this top one be right side up and off to one side and the bottom line of type upside down. It's the same exact thing, same method. So the, our typeface, what we want here is Creon regular. And I'll be linking the typefaces below for you to download for free. There'll be a fonts folder and we'll have Creon and this um, script is called lobster. So once I have that, I want to make this, let's see, 50 point, 50 point. And now you'll, you'll see if I make a circle here from the center that it lines up with the bottom of each line of text. So that means we don't have a perfect circle here. It means we just kind of have one circle here and then one smaller circle here. So what we want to do is make us a, a, basically align these through the center. So I'm going to click here, grab my character palette, and then my baseline shift is one, two, three, four down. It's this one. It's an A with an underscore and then a smaller A with an underscore and then an arrow pointing up. So once I'm there, I can just click these up and down arrows to select, to set my baseline shift. Clicking down, will move it down. I just want it till it looks like it's about centered. 16 points is, looks good to me. We're gonna do the same thing to the bottom, 16 points. Now when I draw a circle from the center, it, it aligns much better. So I can draw one right through the center and it looks, looks right. So the next thing I want to do is grab my ellipse tool again, find the center of my artboard, hold down option shift, and we'll make a nine inch, about nine inch circle. Holding down option and shift is going to make me have a perfect circle drawn from the center of the, of where I clicked. Okay, so now my fill is selected and I don't want that. So I'm gonna go to my swatches palette, make sure the fill swatches in front, click none. My swatches palette, move that to the front. I'm gonna make my color this orangish color here. And then I'm gonna come up here to my stroke and move it and make it four point. If you don't see the stroke, in your toolbar up here, I can go to this palette, the stroke palette and change the weight there. So now I'm going to go back with the, I'm going to click off of my artboard with the select tool, go back to the ellipse, find the center option shift, draw one on the bottom here and we'll make that one about, let's see. About seven, as close to seven and a quarter as I can get it. And now the way I've drawn this, you'll see that the type isn't exactly centered between those circles. And that's where I can come back with my baseline shift. And then just adjust it till it looks visually okay. So that's minus 21. We can go back here, make this the same. Actually, no, we move this one up. We don't want them to be perfectly the same. We just want them to look visually centered around that circle. Now I have my tracking here set to 115. So the tracking is this in your character's palette. The tracking is this one. It's a V and an A with a double-sided arrow pointing left and right. And we'll make this 160. Same thing with this bottom one, 160. You can leave it like this if you want, or we can just keep drawing more circles here. 
So find the center, make the circle just a little bit smaller than that one. I can actually use my eyedropper tool here and click on one of these circles that I already made and it will give it the same exact stroke color and stroke weight. I'm going to move this stroke down to two points. I'm going to click off my artboard see how that looks to deselect it. And then grab my ellipse tool one more time, find the center of my artboard. Option shift, make this one just slightly bigger. We're still at two points, we're at the same color, and that looks good to me. So the next thing I want to do is change my typeface here, and we're using Lobster 2 Bold. I'm just going to click here off to the side. I'm going to type out tacos. And my text is black, so you can't see it here. So I'm just going to click on my selection tool. And actually, the first thing I'm going to do here is go to my appearance palette. Click on add new fill. I'm going to make this red. Just click this red swatch. And then I'll make my stroke white. and it automatically makes it one point. We're gonna change that in a little bit. I wanna grab this and drag it beneath my fill. And I need to change my tracking here because it remembers the last thing you did. So I'm gonna go here to character, set my tracking back to zero. We'll set my baseline shift to zero also. Now when I type out tacos, everything spaced correctly. So we're gonna change our point size of this type. I can either do it here in the character palette or in this toolbar. We're gonna to make it 320. With that selected, we're going to go back to our appearance palette. We'll make this white stroke 10 point. And I want to add one more stroke behind that, a white stroke. Okay, so see if I want to match that color, I need to find the same swatch I used. So now I'm going to go back to my stroke here, select this in appearance. Then click Duplicate Selected Item. Looks like a, a page with a folded up corner. We're going to make this one black. We're going to change the point size to 18. Let's see what it is here. Oh. Actually, let's match that one. We'll make it 21. And what that does is now I have a double outline here. And so what that's going to do is make a little offset between my text and anything behind it. Okay, so now I can keep my text um, horizontal like this, or I can tilt it. So I'm just going to rotate this about 10 degrees. And the way you do that is use my selection tool, select the, the text, mouse over this top right corner until I see my cursor change to that double-sided arrow. And I'm just going to rotate this about 10%. And now you'll see it looks like I just rotated the text. In this one, it looks a little more like it was meant to be at that angle. So what I need to do is use my shear tool. Now your toolbar here might show the scale tool. And if it does, you just click and hold until you see this little fly out menu. Grab the shear tool. And with this text selected, I'm just going to click above it and just drag to the right. 
I like to click above, like way above it to the top of the artboard. I'm just going to move it over to the right until it looks about visually correct. And I can be done with it here also, or I can add this little drop shadow. So here I'm going to select all of these and align everything horizontally. So this is perfectly centered. If you don't like it, you can move it to visual center. If you think, since we have this little uh, swash thing here, taking up, taking up a little more room, we might want to move it in that way. Okay. So once I'm ready to make my drop shadow, I just hold down the option key. Make sure my tacos is selected first with the selection tool. Hold down the option key and I'm just going to click and drag a little bit down and a little bit to the right. And then I'm going to go to my appearance. I'm going to get rid of both strokes. Change this fill color to this yellow here. And the way I got rid of the stroke does, strokes is I just drug each I just clicked each one and then drag it into the trash can icon okay so now I want to go object arrange send backward and now that just moves this one right below the top one and that's it for this design you're ready to save it and move it into whatever app you you need if you're making vinyl shirts you need to make sure all of this is changed from strokes to paths. And I think that's pretty much it. You can change the color of things once you're here. I can take these and make them, make them white, see how that looks, make them red or whatever. But that's the basics of it. And you can just use that baseline shift to move your text to the center of this path and that way you can have it on top and on the bottom and it lines up. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Um, please subscribe. If you'd like to see more content like this, hit the notification bell. If you want to be notified every time I upload a video, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one and keep on designing.